Although many of us might have an initial strong reaction against the word fees when coming across it on any transaction, the truth is that they are important for the maintenance of every financial system, including a decentralized one. In this video, we'll learn why that is true, how that is different from the traditional centralized systems, and how to prioritize your requests, together with a few tips on how to change the fees to your convenience. So hold on tight and let's dig into it. Every time you send any cryptocurrency to a different address, you will incur a network transaction fee. That also applies to any trades you do on exchanges, either buying or selling. How big those fees will be, however, will depend on different variables, such as the network you're using. A Bitcoin transaction, for example, will incur different fees than a similar transaction on Ethereum. There are a few reasons behind that, but we will discuss them in further detail in a moment. So at this point, we already know that these fees come with every transaction. But why are they really needed? To understand that, let's review how blockchains are maintained and who are the players responsible for the validation of all transactions happening on that network. Regardless of a blockchain's consensus mechanism, whether they use proof-of-work or proof-of-stake, the system's soundness and security is maintained by independent individuals with access to these public, decentralized ledgers. These miners and validators, respectively, are lending their computational power to validate all transactions in any given block. So here's our first answer. Securing a decentralized system and guaranteeing it functions as expected requires constant work from many contributors running special software spread all over the globe. As in centralized institutions such as banks, where fees are also a part of their profit for providing a service, Transaction fees on blockchains are the rewards paid out to these miners and validators to incentivize them to keep the system safe, allowing its growth and longevity. Alright, now we understand why they are important. But how are those fees calculated? Their final value is the result of the combination of multiple variables. The first input to consider is the amount of data contained in each transaction. A request containing several unspent transaction outputs, or UTXOs, will be more costly to process than a transaction with fewer UTXOs. The more data needing to be validated, the higher the fee will be. Let's break it down with examples from our daily routine. In the traditional banking system, your total fiat balance consists basically of all the money you received, minus the money you spent. Say that we only use bills and coins. If you want to make a $28 purchase, for example, you will need to use a combination of all the bills and coins you own that amount to that value. As there is no $28 bill, you will need to put together a $20 bill and a $10 bill, or three $10 bills, for instance, whatever you have in hand. If you do so, you also get $2 back. All that information for crypto are UTXOs for the blockchain such as the Bitcoin network that functions on a UTXO model. All these little receipts containing the amount of coins and tokens you have received or got back as change from previous transactions are your UTXOs and they amount to your total balance for the currency and will be put together according to your needs when making a transaction. In the previous example, Paying with two bills instead of three would mean having fewer UTXOs for your transaction, which would most likely translate into lower fees to be paid. The second input to consider is that the fees price will be influenced by the complexity of a given transaction. Simply put, more complex smart contract operations with multiple compute steps will result in higher costs to the user when compared to simpler transactions and DEX swaps. Finally. The third main variable composing a fee's cost structure is the overall transaction volume or overall network congestion at the moment of a request's submission. The higher the demand, the higher the fee might have to be to make it into the very next block. That is because if a blockchain at any given time is being demanded beyond its transactions processing capacity, validators will prioritize the ones paying higher fees. Transactions paying lower fees are set momentarily aside until miners do not see higher priority requests. These factors explain why the fees for the Ethereum network can be so high. Although it can handle more transactions requests per second than the Bitcoin blockchain, for example, the complexity of the transactions and the amount of data involved can amount to higher gas prices. But wait, gas prices? For cryptocurrency? 
You heard it right. Gas refers to the fee or pricing value required to successfully conduct a transaction or execute a contract on the Ethereum blockchain. This price is quantified in GUI, which is just a subunit equal to 100 millionth of an Ether. It's easier to say gas costs 50 GUI than 0.0000005 Ether. Likewise, the Bitcoin blockchain also has its specific network fee unit of measurement, which is called sets per byte. Now we're almost there. All that is missing for you to master the knowledge behind crypto fees is to learn how you can manually change them to your convenience and what are the implications of doing so. When submitting a transaction, you can choose to increase or decrease the fees being paid, which will return you different scenarios. As mentioned previously, miners and validators tend to prioritize transactions with higher fees, which means you will pay more for your request, but it would most likely be validated quicker. Setting the fees too low, however, might make your request take too long to be validated, or it might even not be completed altogether. So as we go through the step-by-step -step on how to edit these fees on the Trust Wallet app when sending some ETH and BTC to a different address, we would like to warn you, proceed at your own risk. Start by launching your Trust Wallet app and selecting the coin you wish to use. Let's start with Ether. Now you have to create a transaction. Tap on Send, add a receipt address and enter the amount of Ether you wish to send. The next screen will summarize the transaction details and will display the transaction fee. On Trust Wallet, the standard fee on your transaction summary will always be the recommended gas price so your transaction is processed as soon as possible. It is important to note, however, that the estimated price shown might not be fully used and you will get the unused gas back into your wallet's balance. Now, tap on the gear on the top right corner to access the advanced settings. Manually edit the gas price GUI field to the desired fee. It must be a numeric value. Lowering it will prompt the app to display a warning message. Then tap on Save and continue with your request. The same can be done with Bitcoin. Go to the transaction's advanced settings and manually edit the network fee sets per byte field. The same warning will be triggered, but if you are happy with your choice, tap on Save and continue with your process. Well done! Now you have a better view of what crypto fees are and how to work with them.